Now that we have learned a little bit about the pen tool and how we can use that tool to create more complex objects, I want to show you some awesome tools that you have available to you in Adobe Illustrator to make shapes and lines and more complicated objects using things that are already built into the program. So we're going to start with exercise one. For this, I've given you a series of exercises to let you practice using some of these basic shape tools. In Adobe Illustrator, you have some default tools. You have the rectangle tool, ellipses, polygon stars, different things like that that have a lot of different options and availability other than just some very basic rectangles and things. So we're going to go through some of those basics and you're going to get some practice on how to use these tools. So let's start with the rectangle. There is a difference between the rectangle and a square. To get a rectangle, this is going to be just any type of sided object. So when you drag, I'm not holding anything down on my keyboard, I can get any any type of rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and change my fill and my stroke to something that you can see a little bit more easily like this bright pink. When you're talking about drawing a square, however, we use the same tool, but this time we're going to hold down the shift key. And the way that I know that I am holding down the shift key is I'm trying to draw this as something other than a square. And I also have some smart guides that are popping up showing me that the space between the top and the side are exactly the same. So just practice drawing one free form and one as a square. The circle and the oval are the same idea, but instead we're going to be using the ellipse tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is L on your keyboard. For the rectangle, by the way, that is M on your keyboard. Very helpful to know those keyboard shortcuts. For the circle, it's the same as the square. I'm just holding down shift, and you can see I've got some smart guys showing me that the top the diameters all the way around are going to be the same. With the oval, I just don't hold the shift down and I can make any shape that I want. We're moving down to the next row. We're gonna talk about polygons and stars. The commands for this are pretty much the same methodology. We're just gonna use two different tools. For the polygon, we're gonna use the polygon tool. And it says I want a five-sided and an eight-sided polygon. If I just click and drag, it's gonna to default to whatever the last polygon you used was, or if it's the first time, it's gonna to default to a six-sided polygon, but I want a five-sided. So there is no keyboard shortcut for the polygon tool, but if I click on and activate that by clicking and holding underneath the rectangle tool and choosing that, I can click one time. When I click one time, I'm gonna get the command box, which is gonna give me the radius option and the sides. So at this point, I can change the sides to five, but I can also change the radius. This is gonna to default to a set size that the program uses, which is about that size, not huge, not tiny, but you can also click and change to eight. And maybe I wanted it to be much smaller. Maybe I wanted it to be 0.25 radius. And I'm going to say, okay, and you'll see it becomes a much smaller polygon. Now, of course, just using my selection tool, I can hold the shift key down and drag that up and change the proportion of that in order to scale things up. With the five-sided star, and the eight-sided star, it's gonna be the exact same thing, only I'm gonna use the star tool. One of the biggest changes though is you have two radius points. You have radius one and radius two. Five-sided star is gonna be your normal star that we're used to seeing. And we're talking about radius one is going to be the radius from the outside, or excuse me, uh, yes, from the outside to the inside. And then radius two is gonna be from on the inside of the star. So if I do an eight-sided star and I change my radius one to say, um, one inch and my radius two to 0.25 inch look at the difference in the star so you'll see that the spikes for the star are much longer and the inside of the star is much smaller that's a good one to know by the way for the certification Eight-sided star, I've asked you to change those radius practicing here. You can just default here, but just practice changing those for me so that you know how to adjust your radius and see what you get. One of the things you can also do is do a rounded rectangle. With the rounded rectangle, it is exactly like the square. However, it's going to automatically round the rectangles. But this says just round the top, right, and bottom left corner. 
Okay. So how do we round just two sides? And I'm going to show you that in one second after I show you how to do a three-sided polygon with rounded corners. So I'm going to go to my polygon. And if you can guess what a three-sided polygon is, that is going to be a triangle. I'm going to make this a little bigger so that we can see, and I'm going to say, okay. One of the things it's going to show you when you select this object is these little circles right here. If I hover over those, you're going to see I get a little arch option. If you pull down, one of the things that you get the choice of is to round those corners. Okay, So the direction says 20 inch. It meant point 20 inch, and I'll need to fix that in the worksheet. I apologize. So we're going to do point 2 inch rounded rectangle. And you'll see you get a different shape to your triangle. And the way it does that is it adds anchor points. And if I use my direct select, you can see that have handles on them that we practiced when we did our pen tool in order to arc that point. I've already talked about this one, so we're going to skip ahead. So this time we're going to do the same idea of that rounded rectangle using our rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw a perfect square. But I want to only round the top right and the bottom left. So how do I do that? If I just grab here, it's going to round all of them, and I don't want that. So I'm going to use my direct select tool, and I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to hold down my shift key and grab this one. So this way, when I round them, it'll round just the two. This is a great way. I use this one a lot to get a leaf shape, for example, but you can just pull your corners just a little bit just to show me that you figured out how to round just two corners. This one's really neat. This one's Pac-Man. I'm going to draw a perfect circle. And just because it is Pac-Man, I'm going to take my stroke off and I'm going to make him yellow like Pac-Man would be. Oh, that's really bright yellow. We're going to darken him up a little bit. But one of the things is you have up here in your options bar is you have a shape properties panel. And one of those right here is a Pac-Man option. So I can use my pie and start at a 60 degree angle, which is right here. And when I do that, it's going to take a chunk away. You may want to play with this because you'll see you can get half circles very easily, quarter circles, all these different options. And you can also change how much is actually displaying. Are you taking away? Or are you leaving behind? You can also change the orientation of that angle here. So that one, in my opinion, is pretty neat and pretty effective to draw something simple like that quickly. Moving down to exercise two, I've included some directions for you just to show you how we manipulate some basic shapes. So I'm going to start with showing you how to draw a different type of triangle. We did the polygon earlier and we drew a three-sided triangle, which gets you this equilateral triangle. But what if I want something that's in a slightly different shape? I could manipulate it using my direct select tool, or I can draw a rectangle. Ooh, that is a circle. Excuse me. I'm going to draw a rectangle. And then I'm going to use my minus anchor point, which is right here. It's also the negative key on your keyboard, and I'm just going to remove one point. Then I get a very quick triangle that I can rotate. If I hold down shift, I can rotate in a perfect 45 degree angle. So I just wanted to see how you can take one shape and manipulate it into another shape. Same with our strawberry exercise right here. So for this one, I'm going to draw a circle to start with. I've included those directions for you to reference as you're drawing, and I'm going to hit L on my keyboard, and I'm going to draw a circle. I do not feel the need to draw this particular shape if I can manipulate one shape into that shape. So with this circle, I'm going to get my direct select tool. If you remember, that's A on my keyboard. And I'm going to double click on this anchor point, and I'm just going to pull this down, and I'm going to flatten that top. I'm going to click on this one so I can pull it down and manipulate the shape to make it a much more elongated, rounded shape. If you want, you can add these little circles. That's all I did here was I just put some green circles. So I'll show you. Oop, I always do that. That is always a flaw of mine is I always forget to deselect before I try to move on to a new shape. And I'm just going to draw one circle. I'm going to change that to green. And then with my direct select, holding down, I'm on a Mac, holding down my option key. I believe it is Alt on a Windows computer. Don't quote me. If You'll see I get a double arrow. And now I can grab and drag out copies. I do this 
quite often I find that's a lot more efficient use of my time. And I'm just going to put those together in a way that they're kind of arranged. But I want my strawberry on top. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say transform. I'm sorry, arrange, bring to front. If I don't like the size of those, which they're a little scaled down for me, I'm just going to grab those holding my shift key down and just scale them up a little bit and just move things around. It's still arranged to back because of stacking order, so I don't have to worry about sending them to the back again even though I've changed their size. Moving on to number three. Number three is talking about drawing lines and how we manipulate the stroke. When you draw any type of line, we do have a line tool. So we're just going to draw, I'm just going to draw in straight. If I hold down the shift key, I do get my lines perfectly straight at a 45 degree rotation. I typically like to hold down that shift so I ensure that I get a nice straight line and I don't have it at a funky angle. Remember that anything in Illustrator that is underlined can be clicked on. And once you've done that, you can then get all of those options like you see here on the worksheet directions that I've included. So I'm going to drop down and I'm going to change this to a two point weight. And that's all we're doing on this first one because I just want you to see how you can change the weights of these lines and it changes the thickness of them. You can type in or you can arrow up or you can use the drop down menu. But we also have the ability to draw a dashed line. So I'm just going to copy that line I already have because I'm really more worried about manipulating that than drawing multiple lines. I'm going to move this up to a five pointed line and when I go back to stroke one of my options is a dashed line. It defaults to a 12 point dash but you also have the ability to put in a gap. So if I put in a three gap you're going to see that it's going to change versus uh, maybe my next dash is only five and then maybe I have a 10 point gap. I can create very unique dashed lines using these options. I can also change how um, it preserves the ends of the dashes so that if it's wrapping corners or things like that, it's going to preserve those um, dashed arrow corners and things like that. In addition to dashes, we also have arrowheads and profile width. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a couple of copies here. Arrowheads is again found under the stroke and it's listed right here. These are great. They're options already built into the program so that you don't have to sit here and draw arrowheads if you're doing things. I use a lot of arrows with what I do. So I like to be able to come in and just grab arrowhead number three. And then I'm going to come down here and grab arrowhead number 18. And as the stroke changes, you're going to see the size of those arrowheads do change as well. So you want to kind of be cautious of what size arrow you choose and you can go up in smaller increments that are not listed. So for example, 2.5. A stroke width is a way to get a much more interesting line than something that is just straight and boxed at the end. These are set up in the program. You can adjust these as you will. You can make new ones as you want, but we're just going to pra practice using this profile width three. I'm going to turn this up a little higher so that you can see the difference between these as I change between them. This allows you to get lots of more interesting design options. I use these a lot when I'm drawing hair or fur, um, things where maybe I need it to look more calligraphy style. Um, but we're definitely just going to add that stroke width profile three. In addition to having a solid line, you can also create lines with gradients on the stroke. So again, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to switch to width profile five. I like to turn this up really large just so that you can see. And when you go to your stroke option here, you're going to see that you have um, a gradient already put in or you can make your own gradient and I'm going to choose just linear and I'm going to double click and change it from pink to we'll go green. One of the things you should notice though is I'm changing the fill color and not the stroke color. So I do need to reverse that. And then that way I can manipulate that color on the stroke and not on the fill. When you have a stroke, there is no fill. And that green looks really gross. I'm gonna switch that to a pretty blue. Um, a stroke doesn't have a fill unless it becomes an object. A line is just an open path. So even though it lets me put a fill, there's nothing to show for that. So I just like to take that fill color away. One of the other things that you can do is you can put a pattern on a stroke. 
So right now it's defaulting to a gradient, but one of the choices I have in here is a pattern. I also can go to my library, which is down here at the bottom right hand corner, or excuse me, left hand corner of my swatches. And some of my choices in here are patterns. And I have all these different patterns. Um, I have texture patterns, um, different geometric patterns, polka dotted patterns, lines, and I can just arrow through these and pull up all these different patterns. So take a minute and just look through and see what your choices are because there are some pretty, I think pretty neat ones. Because why reinvent the wheel? Why make something that already exists in the program? And make sure you switch to profile six. There's also a library, by the way, of gradients if you wanted to look through the different gradient options so that, again, you don't have to make your own. Adobe's great about providing a lot of these type of libraries for us of symbols and brushes and colors and patterns and strokes colors and things like that. So I would definitely take time exploring the libraries because why, why reinvent the wheel? This one, I'm going to ask you to draw your own line with dashes, an arrowhead, and a three-color gradient that you're going to create in the gradient panel, okay? You're going to choose linear. You're just going to click here, and you can add your colors on that by double-clicking and choosing a new color pattern of your choosing. So just kind of play with that. The last one about strokes is working with what's called the width tool. The width tool is one of those tools that once you explore it, um, it's really hard to not realize it's available. So I'm going to make a curved line here using my line curvature pen tool. And this is just a basic line. I'm going to set my stroke to a four and I'm going to just leave that gradient that I have on here. And I'm going to use the width tool. It looks like this kind of flowery thing. It's also shift W on your keyboard. But what this allows you to do is it lets you put in an individual place on that, that stroke and change and adjust those points. I can click and add multiple ones and I can even scale down pieces and create much more complicated lines than maybe what the width stroke, um, sorry, the width profiles will give me. Um, once you have this, you can manipulate the lines, you can change it, and you'll see that the width of the that you already established pretty much stays like it is. This is a great tool to use. Um, I use this a lot with circles, for example. If I have a stroke on a circle, I can take that and really adjust a part of it to maybe create something, a shape that I would like to use, maybe like a a crescent moon shape, for example, or I've used this to draw um, a, a guy that looks like he has a beard. Um, I've done all sorts of different things with this tool, but this one's a really fun tool to practice with and kind of get used to creating these points um, and creating very interesting looking things very easily. All right, well, number four is gonna show you some more ways to now take the strokes and take some effects and make interesting shapes. So we're gonna start with the circle. And I'm gonna hold down my shift key to get that circle. And this is already asking me to make sure that my fill is empty and my stroke is turned up to 40. My fill already is empty, yours may be too, just from what we're doing. And I'm gonna turn this up to 40. And I was supposed to, my bad, draw a 0.6 circle. 0.6 by 0.6. If I want a perfect circle, those two numbers do need to be aligned. And now I have a 40 point stroke. You're going to see it's got a very small little hole in the middle. That's completely fine. And we're going to go to stroke and I'm going to add a dashed line of five with a three gap, two with a three gap. And you're going to see it's going to create this kind of sunburst pattern. What's really neat about this is if your stroke is larger, the sunburst gets smaller. One of the, or larger, excuse me. One of the things you do have to watch is if you get really far into here, if the stroke is too large, it will start to kind of warp a little bit in the middle. You may not notice it unless you zoom in like I did, but it can cause issues depending on what it is you're doing. I'm going to show you my favorite way to draw a really cute little flower is I'm going to start with a hexagon. Remember that a hexagon is six sided and I'm just going to leave it as okay. Now that looks crazy and you're probably wondering why it looks so crazy and that is because I still have the stroke setting from the last activity we just did. So I'm going to come in here and uncheck my dash line and I'm going to turn my stroke to zero 
because I don't need that. And I'm just going to set my fill by clicking over here on my toolbar and I'm just going to pick a blue purple color. Now it looks more like we're used to seeing. I'm going to go to the effects menu and I'm going to say distort and transform and I'm going to use pucker and bloat. Pucker and bloat allows you to pucker or bloat. Actually, this is bloat. This is pucker. And I'm going to just set this on 75% so that it goes to the bloat side. If it was negative 75, it would be on the pucker side. See? And I am going to take that back and just say, okay. Now this right now is still a rectangle or excuse me, a polygon. You can see that shape is still there. If I go to object and say expand appearance, now I have the ability to actually manipulate it like it's actually a flower and not a polygon anymore. If I undo that, you'll see this lets me manipulate the polygon and not the actual shape. So I like to expand a lot of this once I put an effect on it so that I know it is the shape that I intended it to be, and it's not linked to that original shape. If you want to get a little froggy and throw a little circle in there in the middle um, so that you have like a little spot, you can do that. I'm going to do a little orange. I'm going to grab this one and this one, and I'm going to use the align panel that just popped up, and I'm going to center those so that I know they're perfectly centered and it looks right. The last one we're going to do today is our cookie monster. So I'm going to zoom in here and work in this box. I'm gonna draw a circle. I'm gonna leave my circle orange. We're gonna have an orange cookie monster. And we're gonna go back to that effects panel that we just used. But this time we're going to do distort and transform. We're gonna choose roughen. Roughen gives you the ability to add kind of this crazy things on the side. The size, if you set it very large, you're gonna get a lot of big stuff. So I'm actually gonna set this as 1.5%. And I'm going to change my detail up to 90% because I want a lot of little detail. And if you zoom in, you can see it's gotten real rough. But I'm also going to make it be on smooth just so it doesn't look sharp. I want it to look like fur is what my goal is. See, it looks a little like fur. I'm going to draw some eyeballs next. And I am going to use my circle tool again. And I'm only going to draw one set of eyes because I don't need to do tw twice the amount of work. I'm going to choose this light gray color and not white because if I did white, you're going to not be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm choosing light gray. I'm going to draw another little circle in black and put on top and just kind of arrange, excuse me, and just kind of arrange so that it looks kind of like this one right here. I'm going to select the two. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say transform. Oops, I apologize. I'm going to say transform and I'm going to rotate. And I'm going to rotate 284 degrees. And I'm going to make a copy. If I just say okay, it's going to rotate my original and I want a second copy. Now I can drag this one out. But the eyes are going in the wrong direction and I want it on the inside. So I'm going to, while those are still held, I'm going to right click again, transform. And I'm just going to reflect them so they the black circle goes the other way. I'm not gonna make a copy. I am gonna leave it on vertical because I want that one, the new one I made, to reflect. So now this looks a little bit more like Cookie Monster normally would. And you can kind of move things around as you want. I'm holding down my shift key to grab both of these. Maybe I want them a little closer so it kind of looks a little bit more like him. And that, my friends, is some real great options on using basic shapes to help you starting, start to draw more complicated shapes than just what you can do with the pen tool. Hope this was fun and can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks.